Hi, welcome. Today I would like to talk about uh, how you can serialize an exception in C Sharp. So let's get started. Uh, basically, I have created a custom exception which has a property called name. And whenever the constructor is called with the message, I call the base class which is exception with the message and the inner exception is set to null. And uh, typically there is a, a dictionary in an exception which is called data and you can access it and I'm going to add this um, string name as a key and just put the message there and also initialize this property name to be the message and the way I'm going to use this is basically I have the name set to bar associates and I'm creating a new exception with that name and I have a method to test whether the serialization is working and I uh, give it the exception and the exception dot name as string. So if you look at uh, the way it is going to work in the end, it's basically going to uh, serialize and then deserialize and then it will check if the name property is equal to the message. If it is not, it's going to say name is not properly serialized. So now uh, if you just look at this, it is going to complain that it is not marked as serializable. So what you want to do is uh, mark your exception to be serializable. So that's the first thing uh, you need to do. And let me do that and see if that works. So if I mark that serializable, uh, it still did not work. And it is complaining that the constructor to deserialize an object was not found. So basically it's going, it's looking for a few overrides that you need to do and let me copy those overrides. So the overrides it is looking for is this is a constructor uh, for the exception itself and it is called to deserialize uh, the constructor and uh, basically it has something called serialization info as the parameter in the streaming context and I'm just calling the base class with that and on the console I'm printing out that deserialization constructor was called and I'm initializing the property by accessing the info dictionary or the serialization info here and getting the string name and initializing it to that. So that's one part of it. And to serialize what it does is it's called something called a get object data method, which is what I'm shown here. Uh, I'm just looking at the info uh, serialization info and uh, serializing. We want to make sure our name is part of that. So I'm saying you add a value called name and the message. I'm calling the base class method and then it just printing out that get object data call to serialize. So this is all fine and daddy and you can see it uh, matches this and does not print that. So just to give you a little bit insight into what uh, methods are being called, let's say we don't do the deserialization here. So you can see that uh, get object data is called to serialize, which is uh, what we expected. This is what it is being called to serialized. And if I uh, uncomment this, you can see the deserialization constructor is called and let's say uh, during the deserialization if I don't uh, initialize the property name uh, from the serialization info uh, what is going to happen let's see if I uncomment that and if I uncomment that So here you can see saying name is not properly serialized because the name uh, properly is not really initialized. So I'm going to make sure the name is done and run it again. And uh, that is uh, appears to be working. So let's just say name is equal to info got string name. And we add okay so here you can see it is not working because it didn't add the value name so you do need that information so basically what you want to do is uh, you need to add these two methods one is basically the constructor which takes a serialization info in the streaming context and the get object data 
and uh, you can uh, make sure that when it is being serialized you uh, add uh, to the streaming info serialization info all of the values you want to serialize and then call the base class get object data and the serialization is the same thing you want to initialize the property so hopefully uh, this was useful to you and thank you for watching this short screencast